Mariah. I'm a real estate agent in the beautiful state of Oregon. I make videos chatting about all things real estate related. And today I'm going to be doing another Q&A where I just go through some questions that you guys have asked and give you guys my honest um, opinions and answers on them. So I hope that this video brings you some value, whether you are a real estate agent or not. A lot of these um, tips and things that we chat about on our channel um, in all of our Q and A's can apply to life in general and a lot of other different businesses and industries. A lot of times when I do Q and A's, I've prepared ahead of time my responses and I read that off to you. Today I haven't, I'm just gonna wing it. I haven't really read these questions yet, so I'm just gonna read it and um, give you my response off the top of my head. So we'll get through this together. I have my coffee, grab your beverage of choice, and here's the first question. Do you think that majoring in marketing is a waste of time and money if you want to be in real estate? I mean, you can get your realtor's license in a few months. And um, my response to that question is yes, I would say so. There is a lot more to real estate than just um, marketing, even though that is a big point. That's something you can eventually hire someone else to do or learn on your own. There's so many free resources chatting about real estate marketing online. And I think that going to school for that would be a big waste of time and money when you could just get into real estate and jump right in and start making money right off the bat. I don't think that is necessary. Can you make a video talking about good closing gifts? Honestly, I normally just give people a gift card or a handful of different gift cards and the price point that I give them. Uh, normally I give a hundred dollar gift card, but it depends on their price point of their home. If it's more or less, I might give a little more or less, but that's normally pretty much the average um, price of a gift that I'm going to give someone um, that I'm working with on a normal transaction. And um, I know gift cards are kind of a boring thing to give. That's not that great of a closing gift idea, but I give it to them in a little note and I either send it, send it to them in the mail after closing or I give it to them at the closing table if I do go to closing, which I try to. And the reason, honestly, I think that I give uh, gift cards so much as a closing gift is because most, um, the high majority of our clients are sellers and um, it's just so much easier. When they're selling their home, they're moving away, it's easier to just give them a gift card. Now, when I do work with buyers, I like to do a little more fun of a gift and maybe put together a little gift basket with some things that they might like um, from World Market or even like TJ Maxx, somewhere like that. I just put together a thing of household um, things that the buyer might appreciate and leave that in their home. But um, when it's not a buyer and you don't have a home to leave it in, it's, it's a little different. What would you recommend for someone that wants to enter the commercial space of real estate as opposed to residential side? And I honestly can't really answer this question because I've never been on the commercial space. So if anyone has a um, response to this, uh, this nice lady's question, feel free to leave your response and her, your answer to her question in the comments below because I um, am not qualified to answer that question. Can you make a video for what it's like transitioning from part-time real estate to full-time? Um, I pretty much started out full-time in real estate. When I started out, I was working at a clothing store, but the hours that I had were so like so minimal that it was really just like a hobby. Like it was not considered even a part-time job. So I was working pretty much full-time. Um, I could probably make a video what it's like transitioning from full-time to part-time because I've done that, but I haven't done it the other way around. Let's say I work for Century 21 or another big company. Um, they don't offer a basic salary. Only You only get paid by commission. I'm a little confused there. So yes, as a real estate agent, you do not get a salary. You only get paid commission. Um, there are positions at, say you wanna go work for a smaller brokerage or a team, you could potentially have a position that is salary and isn't commission only. And if you're not the type of person that likes to go out there and cold call and get business and ask for business and do all of that, if that's not your strength or what you're into, then maybe 
um, but you still enjoy the real estate um, industry and things about it, then maybe that is the best position for you. And maybe you would enjoy doing something like that. But if you're just a normal real estate agent, no, you don't get a salary. Yes, it is 100% commission based, which is awesome in my opinion. Okay, so let me just take a sip before I get to the next question because I'm parched. <laughs> Okay, so how much does a, what if you're on a budget, how much does a professional photographer cost? Um, the minimal amount that I've seen for, it, it varies depending on the property. So if the home is over a certain square footage, it's gonna cost more, but this, the minimal amount that I've seen for photog real estate photography is probably around $120, but that, and then it would go up from there depending on the size of the property and um, the size of the square footage of the home really. Who or which photography company do you use or would you recommend? Um, for a long time, I did use my sister because she's a wedding photographer and I would have rather paid her than someone else. And it was just a lot more fun working with her on things. And we um, could be a lot more creative with listing videos and all of that stuff. But um, I've also used, uh, a, I think, HD Open House, I want to say. I think that's the name of them. Your company can probably recommend you to a good um, photography company. Um, or if you wanted to do like I was doing at first, you could probably find a local photographer, maybe someone who's even starting out, and um, just make sure that they do a good job and have a wide angle lens and, and know what they're doing as far as that goes and um, support a local small business, small photographer, that might be a good option. Could you please show us what the contract process looks like? Show us how you fill out and explain to your clients the listing agreement. Um, well, obviously can't do this right now because I don't have a listing agreement with me, but I do normally just um, walk them through the agreement and explain to them what each page means and where they need to sign and what it means, um, like where they're signing and all of that stuff. When getting professional photos done, does the seller pay up front or through escrow? Or does it come out of your commission as part of the marketing costs of selling the property? So no, it doesn't come out of your commission. I've never heard of that happening at least. Um, and the seller does not pay for it. You as the realtor pay for all of your marketing expenses. That's not something that your company pays for either. It's all on you. You're an independent contractor. You pay for your own um, listing photography. And I think that's probably why a lot of agents choose to not even hire a professional photographer, which I think really hurts the seller, but um, it's on the, the listing agent to pay for. Um, quick question. There are many agents that offer free staging, free professional photos, free house cleaning services. Are these, are all of these free services really paid by the agent? Yes. If the agent's going to offer those, it is up to the agent to pay for those services. What if the home does not sell? Then, you know, it's a business. You just have to cut your losses. That's just, um, just the way that it is, honestly. Um, is there a clause that agents use that states if your home does not sell, you will reimburse me for these services? If there is, I haven't heard about it. So if you know something about that, I'd love to hear about that in the comments below, but I've never um, heard about a service that reimburses you like that. Um, but yeah, it's they really are um, paid for by the listing agent. I always do professional photography. I have never done um, staging. That's not really popular in our area. It's something I'm definitely open to if the seller asks for it but um, at this point have not done that before. Next question, do you personally go to every showing as the real estate agent? So when you list a property, they're asking if you go to every showing, no. Um, we do not go to every showing when we list the property. Um, when you get it listed on the MLS, then other agents have their buyers and they are the ones bringing them and those other agents for the most part don't want you there at the showing. That's normally a little awkward. Um, I guess the only exception would be if it's a really high end property or if there's some sort of exception where um, it would be necessary for you to be there. But for the most part, um, we have had times when sellers ask if we could come to every showing. And when that happens, it's normally a red flag to either, you know, to really just not take the listing because it kind of just shows that that seller is probably going to be pretty high maintenance. Um, what about staging? What if they have outdated furniture? Um, 
yeah, that is something that I think makes a big difference in houses is when the furniture is outdated, I really think that it really hurts the home. And I think that um, it would look better not having any furniture. And that's something that I have told sellers before is try to minimize your furniture, start packing things, start maybe take one bedroom and put everything in that one bedroom um, if you can't move out yet or don't have a storage unit yet. But um, if the furniture is outdated, then and it really is just killing the vibe of the home or making this cute home look ugly, um, and that totally does happen, then that's what I would suggest is telling the seller to start packing up stuff, putting away furniture, minim minimizing their furniture, and putting things, either getting rid of them, if that's what they're gonna do, or moving them out. How important is the brokerage you choose? Does it really have an effect on your progress, or is it how much effort you put into it? Um, it is 100% how much effort you put into it. That being said, I do think it it is a good um, choice to go with a brokerage that is going to offer you a lot of training and support at first because as a new agent, um, you can be really lost not knowing um, what you're doing. So having, having a little help is definitely good, but even when you go to a brokerage that offers a lot of help and support, you're still on your own at the end of the day. It's still your business. Um, okay, next question. What would you say is the best customer um, or client you've ever had? If you could get just one client every single time, who would they be and why? Um, hmm, best customer ever. I really love it when the clients are, um, when they value your time. That's kind of like a breath of fresh air because there's so many clients that don't value your time and they just want to call you all hours. But when, the, when you get those clients that, you know, say, actually like appreciate you and show it and appreciate what you do. Um, it's, it's pretty rare because most people just take advantage of that. So when you get those clients that are actually appreciative, that's really awesome to have. Can you make a video about how much you make from YouTube, how to gain subscribers? And do you think it's possible to make YouTube a full-time job and how long it takes? Yes, that's actually something that um, I don't know if I'm going to film it yet today or not, but I do have some notes out that I will make a video um, with something similar to that sometime soon. Can you succeed as a part-time real estate agent? Yes, I do think so. Um, I actually, I know so. Um, kind of doing that right now. If one can make half of what you made in your first year, would you consider it success? Yes. Um, I would like to hear your opinion. I'm going to skip that question. Does your company provide training for the paperwork. Yes, your company should provide you with training for the paperwork. Otherwise, there's no other way to learn the paperwork. Kind of important. Um, what type of personality will succeed in this business? If you're an introvert, will you not stand a chance? I wouldn't say so. I actually know personally a few agents that are extreme introverts and they're very successful. And I think that the reason is because there's not one way of doing things or one way of getting clients in this business. There's so many ways uh, that you could go out there and get leads. If you're not into cold calling, that's not the only way to do it just because that's how we like to do it. So I do think so. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult, different aspects might be, but I do think that you can still succeed. So that's the last question that I'm gonna answer today. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.